Well, traditional burners have been firing in boilers like these for many years. There's a lot more going on than just a bunch of heat. We're going to talk combustion today on The Boiling Point. Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. Always good to see you. Glad that you spent some time with us. We've got Gerald Blaine. Appreciate you stopping by again. He's always uh, really anxious to get in front of the camera. Um, mm. So uh, always like going out with Gerald um, when we talk about this particular subject. Uh, he's able to explain this in a very elementary way. And uh, we thought we'd share a little bit about combustion today. So Gerald, why don't you just talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, we do here at WARE and uh, how we actually explain combustion. Well, what I kind of wanted to talk about was uh, our customers in general, they, you know, they, they want their boiler to run. Mm -hmm. They look in, they see a flame, everything's good, steam's being made, and they don't work with it all day, every day, but they just want it to run, so they don't necessarily know if there's a difference between one flame or the next. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about as well. We'll get into some technology differences and how things have advanced over the years. But one of the things I wanted to get into, and I had some people a lot smarter than me put this together, and this is a, a, a typical situation. It would change, uh, furnace size might uh, change this a little bit, the type of burner might change this a little bit. For, but for conversation purposes, this illustrates a lot of good fundamentals regarding that all flames are not equal. Uh, because a lot of the things that are going on today, we talk about uh, FGR, uh, that means flue gas recirculating, and that's utilized a lot of times in order to lower NOx. Uh, Everyone's got a lot of green initiatives out there to keep emissions down. And, but it, by and large, that has a, a, a negative effect and an efficiency effect on, uh, on your system. So I wanted to kind of talk about that and illustrate uh, how that can impact what we do day to day. Uh, a guy will typically look at, at his flame and say, oh, you know, it's nice and blue, it looks good. But that isn't how you define uh, flame quality. It might be a clean flame and that's great, but it might be highly inefficient. And what I've got here is some curves uh, regarding flame temperature. And I didn't do this math. I had someone do some thermal calculations for me that's much smarter than I. Uh, but this kind of goes over the fundamentals of what's actually going on in your boiler, what we want to uh, look for, what we want to avoid. Um, this first curve that we're looking at here is, is with zero FGR and that's kind of where I'm going to base the conversation. So as you can see here, uh, as you add FGR, you're decreasing flame temperature. So let's talk about we don't have any FGR from the uh, beginning. A lot of people don't have new low NOx burners at this point. And what, what, what they're often going to see is we talk about uh, excess air uh, O2s, as an example, 15% uh, excess air uh, is an almost 3% O2, and that's typical. And the engineering that usually happens with traditional equipment is that they're hitting 3% at high fire. Uh, the problem is, as you come down a, a typical firing range, you're going to see excess airs go up, excess air and the O2 level. So as an example, if we add 30% excess air and we're in a lower firing range, we're going to see a lower flame temperature, higher O2s, and you see us coming down the curve. Just going from 15 to 30%, we could see a drop close to 300 degrees in flame temperature. So I'm trying to illustrate here that all flames are not equal. And you can see as we add uh, flue gas recirculation, we lower those temperatures further. Often I'll see systems that might be 40 or 50% excess air getting up here into the six and 7% O2 ranges. And you can see where that can bring it down, you know, four, five, 600 degrees in flame temperature. So all flames are not created equal and the things we're wanting to avoid by understanding this is avoid flame quenching which is what's occurring here with the lowering of the temperature which is necessary to some degree when we get into the NOx but how much uh, flue gas we have to add is going to impact how efficient that particular system is and not all low NOx are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in doing this too we want to avoid furnace cooling. So if we lower our temperatures, we're increasing the air, now we've got our heat exchanger battling against us. Uh, and we want to avoid high velocities. A lot of systems, uh, traditional systems in particular, uh, they can use lower horsepower fans because the velocities are running through there quickly and the heat exchanger can't perform exactly like we'd like it. 
So by avoiding some of these things, we're looking for better heat transfer. We also want to look for less maintenance. So there's a lot of equipment out there that has fewer moving parts. And those are the kinds of things we're wanting to implement into our combustion system. But these are just some of the fundamentals that the average person who's not dealing with this kind of thing every day simply looks in the peephole and goes, I got a flame. And why is your flame any different? And these are some of the characteristics that really cause that to be different. Well, don't worry. There's a lot more of that video. If you'd like to see more, you can click right here and see more of that discussion between uh, Gerald and myself. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, maybe follow us on Twitter, on the social media, and maybe send us a tweet. Don't forget that, BoilerWarehouse.com. Always love to see you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you the next time on The Boiling Point.